Well, good day and welcome to you as you join me at the Heritage Christian Online Schools Teleport Center for Virtual Worlds. You'll find off to the left a couple strange looking items. One is a booth that is for the purpose of providing instruction and content through multimedia. If you click on the Start Media button, you'll see that it will bring up multimedia. The program is a presentation of the Provincial Educational Media Center. If we go over to the right, you'll find a red telephone booth. When you go into the telephone booth and back out again, what will happen is it will um, bring up a, a browser window in which you'll be able to sign in to the Scribbler account that is being assigned to that particular area. Uh, this is because we're wanting students to record their work um, and we don't uh, need to have uh, a number of conversations bleeding one into the other as they do that. What we're looking at on the wall over here are teleports. As we mouse over them, you'll see that they're live. And if we click on any of these signs, it will take us into those particular worlds. There are seven up on the wall, although there's an eighth one that's currently under development with the Learning Nexus project, sponsored by the provincial government of BC, the Education Department. Um, we don't have that up just yet, but uh, it looks like it's going to be very exciting and perhaps our best build yet. Some of these worlds have been built, in fact, by the students themselves. But the one we're going to look at today is called Language World, and it specializes in the French language. The idea being to provide a place, a world, in which students can be involved in learning French in an immersive situation. I'm going to click the teleport, and we'll see you in Language World. Well, bienvenue and welcome to École Heritage, our online virtual school. It emulates most everything we have in a regular school, including a computer lab. It also has offices. It has a resource room down at the end of the hall here. It has various levels of classrooms, uh, the gymnasium, washrooms, Offices, secretaries, has a library along with the staff room, cafeteria, and even a clocks that keep time. It also has some NPC players that you'll see inside, and these, of course, are for granting the information. As we mouse over this one, you'll see it says Bienvenue, cliquez sur moi s'il vous plaît. So when we click on her, what happens is a browser screen comes up with the information that we're working. So in this way, students are able to access information that they're reading about how to proceed. If we go in through the door, we find a professor. And as with most of the objects in this build, uh, they are live. So if we click on them, a professor. you'll hear that the uh, vocabulary that the students are learning is available to them by clicking on the objects. If we click on these chairs here, however, the students get to sit down. And this allows them to then interact with other students. They can form various groups and do their conversations. Speaking of conversations, as we look over on the wall, we see another kind of telephone. And with this telephone, if we click on it, it will bring up the browser once again and allow the students to sign in to a VoIP system that um, permits the conversations that are taking place in this room to be heard by each other. Very, very handy. If we click on the picture, we get to take pictures of what's going on in the room, and it's the same 
a screen capture device that I'm using at the moment. If we go over to the screen here, we have a way of sharing with an entire class what the teacher is wanting to teach. So, for instance, if we were to click on this button here. The following program is a presentation of the Provincial Educational Media Center. And of course, everyone in the room gets to see that at once, but that may not be the case for best learning. And so we also have uh, these uh, web-based products on links. If we click on, for instance, the Telefront Say one, you'll see that all of the Telefront Say videos are linked so that they can be accessed online. This is on Google Doc. And as you do that, you'll see that it has the, the controls. Program is a presentation of the so looking below, students are able to forward it, pause it, run it as many times as they need to until they understand it. As we go over towards the right, you'll see that the program that they use is the basic resource for most of their vocabulary needs is Rosetta Stone. They can sign in here, they can email me, they can email the French teacher, or else they can contact other members of their group, their class, their level, um, according to how the teacher sets up this um, class management system in here. And then, of course, last of all, when we click on this link here, it goes to a Google Doc, which has the various levels that are being covered within this French program. And then below would have the students. Of course, we're not putting the student names in there. But we have me and level one. And when I click on the document for that, it would bring up my document. And my document is a page that can be informing for me as to what assignments I have to do. And it's editable by the teacher. So the teacher is then able to show me what it is that I need to be doing. And also when I've done those assignments and submitted my videos to her, then uh, she can um, give me the mark, and I can look at the mark, and I can comment on it, but I can't change it. So this is a great way of doing some project-based learning. So that up there. And then as we look at around the room, you'll see this is the objectives of the level. But you'll also see that there are links on the wall too by subject. So for instance, when I click on me and my family, a web link comes up. Bonjour, je m'appelle Christiane. And those web links, again, are there to inform the students. So what we end up with in this classroom is a room where the furniture can be arranged in any configuration that you want. The teacher can walk in and be present, and uh, as well as the students, and interact with each other live. It can be captured by video. It can be heard by each other. The resources can be accessed whenever the student um, wants to, so asynchronously, or else the classroom can be run synchronously as well. So that's our classroom. And I think it's time for us to venture out from the four walls of the classroom and into the big, brave world of a virtual French community. See you outside. I recently returned from a conference in Spain where the concept of learning in an immersive environment was um, brought home rather forcefully to me. Uh, I needed to learn how to speak Spanish, and I needed to learn how to speak Spanish rather quickly. And indeed, it happened rather quickly that I was able to learn more Spanish than I probably ever would have been able to in a classroom. And so again, this is where the advantage of having an immersive world where students can participate immersively becomes particularly powerful. What you'll see is the bus takes us to um, my home is uh, a series of empty houses. Those houses are about to be inhabited 
by pairs of students who will be um, equipping those homes with all the furniture and the accoutrements that one would need in one's house. This, of course, is part of the learning outcomes for the level two and for grade six students. And so this is the way that they're going to be doing that. They will arrive at their home, determine the things, the items that they want, and at that point, they'll go to the mall and purchase those items. So I'm going to go to our, uh, go past my house here. I'm going to walk back from the building center where they can learn all the things that they need to know about how to build. And we're going to go into the show home here. No pain. So as you notice, when you enter into a room, La you'll notice that it's announced what room it is. You'll also notice that items in the rooms are live. Frigo. So when we click on them, uh, you find out what they are in French. As you mouse over them, they'll be in English, but as you uh, click on them, they'll go live. For items that aren't discrete, such as this tap, I've placed a uh, a B on it. If you mouse over the B, it'll say faucet. And then when you click on the B, robinet. and so on. So we'll just take a quick tour out here. La cuisine. La chaise. La salle de séjour. And again, we can make things in the house alive as well. There's an upstairs where we can go uh, visit washrooms. Uh, there's a garage up to the side. And when we go in the garage, we've got the car, we can have the motorcycle, we can have lawnmowers, as well as all the flowers, all those kinds of things. Plus, we have uh, washing machines, dryers, La voiture. and so on and so forth. So the job of the students uh, working in Paris will be to equip their house. The, uh, what becomes very interesting is this, the teacher will come by a few times, perhaps, to take a look at how they're doing. And the question will be asked, qu'est-ce que c'est? And if the student is able to respond to what's there, either one of them, uh, then it gets to stay. But if they don't know what it is, then it's deleted and they have to go to the trouble of going to the store, purchasing it again, and then replicating it for their home. And where do they do this? They do this at the mall. So let's just take a quick look and we'll head over on our way to the mall. In this case, I'm able to fly. Students will not be able to. So we'll just take a quick look over to our right and see that the uh, Build comes complete with restaurants, and inside is complete a jukebox with 50 songs. Uh, to the right of that, you'll see there's a movie theater. It's a complete little working movie theater. To the left, you'll find an airport. To the right here, we see a, a theater. And as this comes into view, see that it will begin to rest. Rather more slowly than I used to. Over to the right is the mall. And in the mall, there's everyone, everything that one could imagine. La porte. There are restaurants. La porte. Media. Barber shops. Beauty salons. Kitchen accoutrements. An elevator, an escalator, pardon me, that goes upstairs. Live. Works. 
uh, multimedia shop, game shop, warehouse, animal store. Security guards, that we'll talk to. Clothing, furniture, and as we go out the end, the garden center. With everything that you might need for your yard. And again, the items are live. If you click on them, they'll tell you what they are. And so that's basically how the students will be furnishing their homes and helping to complete their level two. Next, we'll look at level three. On the eastern side of the mall, one finds the shipping department, but there's also much, much more. This space center, for instance, most of it in English, is a facility with five buildings filled with um, all the uh, imaginable business that uh, NASA conducts. It, probably this facility alone would take a couple hours to go through. So I haven't shown you the building center. I haven't shown you um, uh, uh, what's inside of the restaurants and all those kinds of things. But if you can imagine, they are environments where interactions are uh, completely encouraged and, and enabled so that students can have an authentic experience whether it's uh, dining and interacting with others. Here, for instance, is our metro station. And as we click on the subway, it's going to take us to the center of town, which is the old section, the French section of town. There's a bit of a backstory to this build, and that is that um, this used to be an old mining town with some agriculture. Um, and as time went on, uh, this French Canadian town uh, it has uh, quite a number of new immigrants to it. Uh, there's an English population that's moving in, and so you get a blend of both the French and the English happening. So we'll exit the downtown at the downtown station. We won't go down to where the residential areas are. And we'll take this way up. Again, all we need to do is stand on it and it does the rest. And as we come out of the station, we find ourselves in uh, the old section of town. Just quickly take a, a brief look down this way, where we've got an actual working theater. So you can go in and order popcorn, you can go in and order your tickets. And of course, these sort of assignments can become rather demanding, such as finding out the cost of uh, the movie, what's playing, and then explaining to the teacher why you should be allowed to go see the PG movie or not. This is the English square in here, and as you can see, central to it is a timepiece. You'll see how it differs when you get to uh, the French section. Here's the old section of town, and as you see, there's everything from a female parlor, pharmacy, doctors, dentist office, and of course, the Catholic Church, which is central to every French community in town, along with the graveyard, and of course the shops, which uh, the students are always amazed to discover that the French come to these shops for their morning bread, nice and fresh, as opposed to the English population that goes to the mall and tries to buy a week or two of groceries to put in the freezer in the center of the French square, instead of the timepiece. Well, you do have a timepiece, but it's a sundial. It's kind of reflecting the attitude towards the culture. As we uh, mosey on down the square, which has plenty of culture to it, one of my favorite pieces is the restaurant. I always love French dining. And as we go in this one here, you'll find a lovely atmosphere. It's a place where one can uh, listen to jazz music and the waitress will take your order. And as we go up the stairs, we find a fully equipped kitchen with everything one might need for cooking and preparing food. A 
as we go out, you can head across the square past the artists doing your drawings over to the horse and carriage. And if we click on the horse and carriage, we can actually take a ride. So let's just take a tour of the Bonnie Streets. We've got the post office, complete with all the facilities inside, the fire department. To the left, we see a police department. And then the police department uh, comes complete with lockups, as the fire department comes complete with sliding poles and all the rest of that. The swimming pool to the right has slides that work, as well as diving boards. We have stable to the right. Maybe we'll take our trusty steed to get the rest. And across the street, one has the bank. So if you do your banking inside, there, you can go to the city hall where you take the money that you took out and give it away in taxes. One can go across the street. You can come up to Jaywalk, of course, and head down to the local art museum, where right now uh, what's being featured are French Impressionistic artists. Is able to take a tour through both floors, see the greatest work of art by the various impressionistic painters, while listening to the beautiful music of WC. Afterwards, one might want to go for some wine tasting at the winery across the street, or go for some Japanese food to the left. There's a general store, bus depot, there's also a history museum, and Take a quick flight over top. One will see below the farms are set out with all the animals with the produce. Apple orchards. Fresh fruit stand. Barbecue area for the museum. And of course, heritage room. Now, as you can see, there's a divide. And that's because the build has been divided into four quadrants. And we'll come back and talk about that in just a moment as we go on to level four. As the students level up to higher levels of French learning, of course the sophistication of what's being asked for also increases as well. And I think that this is where the flexibility of virtual worlds really becomes most powerful. The students can be given any kind of backdrop or situation in which they can authentically apply the, what they've learned in their French and, um, and have it in a really immersive and interactive contextual setting. Of course, what we're trying to do is make this fun for them as well. And when you look at um, the theory behind gaming, you see that um, the leveling up part is very important. And so, if you haven't noticed by now, this build has been divided into four different quadrants. The first quadrant is the French section of town. The second quadrant that we're going to be looking at right now is uh, allows for field trips. And this particular field trip will be out to the game park, but within the game park is also uh, abandoned mines, uh, secret tunnels, all kinds of possibilities exist here. Now the students cannot get to here unless they've completed their level three. Uh, that's the only thing that will allow them to move into this area. And once they're here, they can participate by clicking on one of the vehicles. And it's a, a mover that will take them out for their trip through the game park. Now they can leave the vehicle should they choose to, 
Um, it's just a, a method of making sure that they see all of the different animals that are available to them here. Sometimes they travel by vehicle, other times they may travel by raft. There are also a set of hot air balloons that they can travel in and uh, fly overhead. But when they come to their stations, and there are nine stations in all, uh, there's a series of different kinds of animals that are uh, suited to that particular kind of environment. For the most part, it's Africa, but there's also North American as well. And when they stop, they're able to click on the animals and, uh, of course, uh, it let uh, uh, the, the French language from that as well. I'm going to fly, just fly up to give you an overview of it so that you get the general idea. And um, there's also things like, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, career choices, there's also a veterinary center as well that they can go in. And, um, of course, all the conversations that one might want to have take place around a career as a veterinarian can take place in that particular center. As they move up to level four, they're also able to then come into the recreation area. And over at the recreation area, we have a full-size hockey rink, complete with the avatars and, that are skating and the ability for one to skate as well complete with um, changing rooms, penalty benches for the hockey teams. And um, I'm told an ability that we'll have to uh, play some hockey as well in here. Of course, no Canadian build would be complete without the hockey arena. For our American friends, we have on the other side of the parking lot, the baseball diamond. And this is complete with music, with multimedia, and uh, the ability to play some games out here as well. Underground, there are changing rooms, all kinds of different facilities. Over to the right here, we have a camping area. We have an area for boats, for water skiing, kayaking, a river through, uh, down which people can float in inner tubes. We also have a racetrack. In the racetrack, you can race motorcycles, all kinds of different vehicles and it's quite an authentic experience racing around the track against your friends. Of course the idea here is the kids think that they've, uh, they're being rewarded with an opportunity to have fun. Well they are having fun but it's all happening in French. So they're learning a lot by that too. Again we see one of the booths here for information and you would get all the information that you need uh, around the vocabulary to do the skiing when you step into the booth, or you can click on the gondola and up you go to the top of the ski slope. You'll notice that, it's ski that it is snowing here. Uh, there's also snow blowers up above. There's also avatars that one can uh, assume in which you can ski down the slope. There's a, a ski jump where you can jump off the, the, the jump and, and do your flips and twists and turns and all the rest of that stuff. And of course, the ski lodge. There's the snowblower over to the right. As we go into the ski lodge, this is uh, the last part of the build that we're really working on right now. Up to the right, you'll see as you go up the stairs, there are um, stores to do with summer sports, camping, uh, tenting, you know, all those kinds of things. And then a winter sports store as well. And we're considering working on a, an economy where students will need to manage their, their money as they go through the game. Here we've got the Roaring Fireplace. Uh, we'll have a screen up above where the kids can participate in karaoke. And with the karaoke, of course, it all being in French. And then, of course, the skis pop downstairs. And this will be a dance floor. And indeed, uh, music can be selected. The avatars can press a button and be dancing with their partners. So all kinds of opportunities for authentic social experiences. And uh, it really is quite amazing just how much the kids really do enjoy these kinds of activities.
The last thing that we're going to look at in this particular bill is uh, again in development there'll be a, a mountain bike trail that students will need to carefully ride up in order to get to the top and if they manage to make it to the top they'll find hang gliders waiting for them and with the hang gliders they can fly and with uh, any luck at all they will of course fly across the build into the areas where students don't have access to hind gliders. And as they land in those areas and take off, the other students will be looking at uh, them and saying, where did you get those and how can I get one? And of course, the way that they get one is by learning their French. So I hope that I've given you a, some idea of what it is that uh, I'm about and have been working on. And uh, I hope that you see not just the pictures here, but you see the possibilities. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments, suggestions, ideas. I think working together, uh, I think that education can be taken to whole new levels. Uh, we can have students uh, quite engaged uh, with the whole concept of the flipped classroom, where they can't wait to get home so they can participate in learning at home. Thank you for your time and your patience listening to this. Uh, I hope that we uh, will be in touch at some point in the future. Sounded.